I am invo inviting Cody Lawn here. Here we go. Here oh, we are. Words. We're in business. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I was like, I, I forgot for a second where the live, um, how like to start a live video. So I was quickly Googling how to start a live video on Instagram. <laughs> so we got it figured out. <laughs> Google's Lord. the magic for all yeah. of us right now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So this is going to go well. All right. <laughs> how, how are you? It's been a while I'm, since I've seen you in real life. I know. I know. We, I know. I think it's been a year since we've actually seen each other. I'm doing, doing well. Busy, teaching a lot, which is nice, you know, in considering. So, yeah, good. But, but learning a lot about, I was teaching online back and forth anyways before all this started, but learning even more about how to make it a better process and, and, um, what things, you know, how to make that process more personalized and, and informative for my students. So yes. it's been good. Yeah. I've seen you, I've seen you advertising for, for your online studio. So that's great. I think we're all kind of in that place right now as teachers. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is Dr. Cody Lon, everyone. Um, I see some of you guys joining. Yay. I'm glad this is working. This is my first Instagram live video. So I'm just thrilled that this is even working a little bit. It's only <laughs> going to go uphill from here. Yes. Um, <laughs> so um, Cody and I know each other from performing in the world premiere of The Taming, Paul Elwood's The Taming at the University of Northern Colorado. Mm -hmm. um, and it was it was a fun production. That was, was. I guess, uh, about a year ago now. Yeah, November, November, November of last year. Yeah, yeah. But um, Cody is also a wonderful teacher. Um, and I actually asked for some icebreakers from our Instagram and Facebook audience. Great. And so great. I do have some questions for you to okay. begin with. I might just, I'm ready. There's so many good ones. I, I'm having a hard time picking. Um, I, one of my favorite ones, actually, that it, does, it does come from my sister, but I just really like this question. So here's, here's my question. Okay. What is one of the most reducing things in your Google history? search history <laughs> one of the most say to get reducing reducing things in your google search history like what's something you're embarrassed that you had to search out oh. on google or it can just be something that you've searched recently well <laughs> so so during my off time i'm not a gamer i don't play video games in any sort of i don't go online i don't play you know like i don't uh -huh. do all that but but i for my birthday this year during during lockdown i was sad and bought myself an xbox one um, for my, and I found it on a crazy deal guy that fixes them and it's anyway, so, so I could afford it. I had, you know, whatever. So I got it. So I play games. I also have a Wii that uh -huh. was given to me a couple years ago. So I look up walkthroughs uh -huh. on these games <laughs> when I get that's stuck. So, so that's one of the things that I'm like, well, I don't know if it's embarrassing, but it's definitely like, it doesn't fit the professor persona. <laughs> right. Right. Oh yeah. We, we, we always, we all have our, our Google search histories that are, um, <laughs> Interesting. Awesome. Okay, well, let's let's just start talking about um, what what people are here to hear how yeah. to teach tenors. So first, I just want to start off asking you about your story, how you discovered singing, teaching. Um, just tell us a little bit about your background, if you don't mind. Great. Yeah. So I, um, I grew up here um, in Longmont, Colorado, I uh, went to a very small private Christian high school where music we had music in it. And actually, considering the size of the school, it was it was a decent program. Um, but I, I grew up, I just like to be loud. I like to sing. I like to, you know, no one that knows me is surprised about that. Um, <laughs> Makes sense. So, Cody so is a tenor, it, by the way, everyone. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, our fave is to be loud. Um, so so I, um, I sang in choir all through school. I started taking voice. Um, my, my junior high choral director uh, was giving, he was the junior high and high school director. Um, and I saw that he was advertising lessons uh, when I was in eighth grade and thought, I really like, I like to do this, but I just feel like it's hard. And, and, you know, I love to love to make this music. I'd played trumpet for a long time. And that was so much easier at the time, because there were, you know, three valves that you, you push down, you blow and something happens. And you know, when I push down, you know, first valve, I'm going to get an F natural out of this trumpet. And so voice was was so much more mysterious. So I, I thought I want help. I want help to mm -hmm you know, make this like demystify it a little bit. Mm -hmm. So although that was not the vocabulary I used when I was 14 years old, starting lessons. Um, so I took lessons with him for three years. And then I was um, really interested actually in I was really interested in UNC for a uh, music ed degree. Um, and then I got a um, my my teacher was at Colorado State. Um, and 
I went up and visited a bunch and the choral director and the voice teachers got to know me. And so I ended up going there for uh, education for two years. Then I switched to performance after that because I thought I really love being with people and I don't mm -hmm. think the public school system is the right fit for me. Mm -hmm. um, so I sort of fell into a master's program, wasn't sure what I wanted to do with that. I auditioned a couple of places knowing that maybe I want to do a pedagogy focus uh, in, a, in a master's, but I, had, I auditioned at University of Iowa, um, got in, they liked me, we had a good, we connected well, but then they didn't have any money at all. So I ended up going to the University of Florida, which mm -hmm. was the full ride tuition waiver with stipend. And I thought, yeah, little to no debt for that degree sounds much better than, than you know, That's 60 smart. or more thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah. So, so it was actually there that I really discovered um, my love for teaching. Um, I, I had some friends who uh, asked for lessons, just sort of friend, friends of friends that I ended up making that, that very casually, we started a lesson process and I really enjoyed it and thought, oh, this is, oh, private voice lessons. All right. So I thought maybe I want to do a doctorate in this, you know, it was sort of this, this slow process. And then I, I actually almost gave up on singing after my master's. I was very, very close to the end of my master's just going, I'm no good at this. Mm -hmm. I, I don't. I'm, I'm never going to succeed in this. And I went and sort of on a whim auditioned for University of Southern Mississippi for Dr. Mary Ann Kyle. Um, and she, I told her this after my, my audition, I really didn't care that much about my audition. So I actually ended up singing really well because I just wasn't, I wasn't concerned uh, about uh, it. Isn't that funny? Yeah, that always happens. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, I gave this great audition and, and she came up to me afterwards and she said, so what are your plans for next year? I was like, well, I'm going to move to Idaho, this job where that I have now. I, the, the very, very early version of it was sort of being formulated when, when I was that age. And, and so I said, I'm going to move to, I'm going to move to Idaho. I'm going to do this because I'm no good. I, you know, I just don't want to, and she kind of squints at me and she goes, how about you come study with me and we'll just see what happens, you know, like uh, hush, you know, sort of, sort of like, don't, don't count yourself out too soon. And so that was where I really, both my voice and my teaching really flourished under her. She, she was able to do a lot of, a lot of discovery with me and encourage me, not just pedagogically, but, but just as a, as a human. Mm -hmm. um, and her, her mantra, her thing that she always says is good people first, good people first, good people first. That's, she said, she said, we're in the business of training humans, not just voices. Um, and so that was where I went, oh yeah, I love, I love this. I really love this. I wow. love singing. And I felt like, oh, I don't feel that. And I went from being, from being sort of not noticeable to being really marketable pretty quickly with her because she really she, we, she and I just really clicked and so that was that was where that took off and I've been teaching at the collegiate level ever since when I got done with my that's DMA great. so yeah that's great it, it's always interesting to hear people's journeys and how different it is and also it's good to hear too I, I appreciate you saying that about you know, actually feeling that you were no good, because I think as singers, we all go through that, you know, mm -hmm. even even mm -hmm. singers that you hear, I mean, you're amazing, you know, when, when I hear you, I'm like, goodness, he's, he's such a great tenor, <laughs> but when, you know, even you have struggled with that. So I think that that's mm -hmm. really important for all of us to hear that we yeah. all go through those things. And yeah. Um, and I, I constantly tell my students that too, when my students mm -hmm. are struggling with something, I go, hey, I didn't, you know, some, some people, and it's not, it's not discounting these people at all, but some people have this just very, very young natural instrument. You know, they come out. I was at Des Moines Metro Opera in 2014 and I was 20, oh Lord, how, how, how old was I? 26 uh, when I was there. Um, and there were these people who had just finished undergrad. We had three fresh undergrad graduates there uh -huh, uh -huh. that all have gone on. One of them was a, a Met uh, grand finalist. One of them was a Met finalist. One oh, of them Lord. did the Lindemann program you know, at, oh. at 24, you know, yeah. these, these like wunderkind people yeah. that, that, and, and I wasn't one of those people, you know, I had, yeah. I had a natural instrument, but it wasn't, it wasn't developed that early. So I tell my students, Hey, I've gone through the journey that you're, that you're struggling with. Trust mm -hmm. me. Like I almost gave up. Mm -hmm. I almost just tossed it away. So I think that's such a valuable experience to have as teachers, um, to have experiences like that. So you can walk through, you can walk mm -hmm. other students through that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. <clears throat> Um, okay, so tell me about what is the same about teaching students in your own voice type and all other voice types. So what's the same about teaching tenors as as any other singers? What are some of those similarities that you see? Sure, sure. So so um, everybody has a body. 
And, and we've got, you know, we've got different, you know, different gender and different weight distribution within that different height, different, you know, all these different builds. So that varies according to, to person to person, but we all have to have air to fuel the car. You know, we have to have gas to fuel the car. We have to have air to fuel that voice. So in my, I have, I have sort of a, a, a body awareness and an alignment set up mm -hmm. that I use with all of my students. Um, that then as I discover how they learn and what, and what strengths and weaknesses they have and where they, where they need different guidance. Um, I tweak that, but that's one of the big things that all voices, everybody. Um, I think that teaching across all voice types to everybody deals with not just physical, but, but psychological issues in their singing. Um, I have a soprano actually at the, the college in Idaho where I teach that she's, absolutely incredible i mean one of the best voices i've ever taught she's she's spectacular but when she would come into my studio she would start singing and the minute that something would go awry in whatever way even if it was mild even if you know through a passaggio like one of the one of you know the the me to fa in the scale didn't quite sit the way she wanted it to she would immediately shut down yeah yeah I've had and, like that. and uh -huh. yeah and so you know that that's the thing that i see and now she doesn't do that anymore and she sounds glorious it's that's wonderful great. but but um that's the thing that i find most common across all voice types is that it's less about the anatomical and physiological pedagogy that mm -hmm. needs to be you know that sort of across the board it's it's a lot more about the hey how do i how do i speak to you in your learning style and in your unique strengths and weaknesses that way so that's all the way across the board um everybody struggles with memory issues everybody struggles with you know the, these sort of things that, that are less vocal and more yeah. mental you know mm -hmm. so yeah yeah that's great yeah i i love that i love what you said about teaching styles and learning students teaching styles that's so important and i think something that that good teachers are really good at speaking to different students in their language um that's great so tell me now the the question what is different what is different about teaching tenors than other voice types yeah well i have i full you know full disclosure i have so much fun teaching my own voice type most i was Absolutely. looking through um as i've been looking through my materials and sort of cataloging some things lately i realized oh most of my not all but but i'd say 60 percent of my really successful students that have done bigger things mm -hmm. are tenors and mm -hmm. the other 40 percent are all the other voice types and i didn't really necessarily think that oh like i'm a good teacher of my own voice type or not you know i didn't have any sort of assessment of that right. until recently and i was updating those materials and went oh my my really successful students are all tenors yeah. okay <laughs> you know so so i'd say the thing that's that's different about teaching tenors tenors deal with such a um we have to maintain such a high tessitura with with high chest quotient sound right and so you know you're you're singing way above your passaggio for for pages mm -hmm. <laughs> and pages of music and and while you know the the um female voices have a, a lower chest quotient up higher you know so mm -hmm. there's there's that difference so but we have to hold this really high tessitura for that so there's even though we you know we work for the least subglottal pressure that we can manage in singing we still just sort of by nature have a higher degree of subglottal pressure as tenors right. so um it's the 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 re the release and awareness and sort of the the balance phonation and air pressure um relationship is the most precarious in tenors i found um and i think that that using the falsetto falsetto chest connection exercises is the most useful in tenor voices to to get them to at least associate the pitch with mm -hmm. an easy sensation okay um and and for me what's different is that because i've sung all the tenor rep i have you know the other the other voice types i have to i have to think sometimes about what what rep to give people where tenors i can go oh sing this and this and this and this you know i just know off the top of my head all of the rep that i would give a tenor right and so it's easier and i can demonstrate things more uh, I don't know what word I want to use, more sort of readily with tenors. Right. If we're, you know, I can demonstrate things, you know, any voice, good voice teacher can demonstrate things for any voice type, but the unique sensations and, and the, you know, the, the negotiation of the passaggio and, and high voice things 
and falsetto things I can just do and my tenors go, oh, it's supposed to sound like That's, that, yep. you know? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I think we all find that. I mean, I'm, I don't know. I don't know if I can speak for all voice teachers, but I think we all find that, that it is a bit easier to teach our own voice type, which is why I'm interested in interviewing different teachers of different mm -hmm. voice types, because they, we do have, you know, at least we, we kind of feel sensations similarly to our students in that voice type. Yeah. So we can speak to that a little bit, uh, a little bit more. Yeah, great. So um, what kind of vocal, this might be a little bit of the same question, but what kind of vocal challenges do you see most often in students of your own voice type? Mm -hmm. um, so I've got, how many current tenors? One, two, three. Most of my students up in Idaho are baritones. I've got a whole scad of really good baritones in Idaho. Um, I've got two in Idaho, one, two, oh, two here. So I have four, four tenors right now, two here and two in Idaho. So the things that I find it's, it's the, the, the issues that they face is that the, it's the negotiation of how do I sing um, relying on my breath system primarily or, or almost exclusively through right. those vocal transitions, you know? Right. Um, right. And I have one uh, name. Uh, I'll just throw this in. He won't, he won't mind. Uh, name Zach up in, up in uh, Idaho that, that he, when he came to me, the voice is natural and beautiful. I mean, natural vibrato, warm, warm timbre without any lessons. He just had a very nice natural instrument. But then as we've been, I asked him in the lesson one day, I said, so what do you, you know, what's your, it was early on in the process. What are your goals with this process? What do you want to do? Mm -hmm. And he said, well, I, you know, these things are hard. And he said, I just really like to sing high. And he, his eyes got all big. And I was like, well, so do I. So I, you know, I get that. Uh, so, so, but negotiating how, how to get, I feel like, tenors getting them to feel the the turn the cover the the negotiation through the passaggio up into the upper voice is some tenors get it some tenors you can do it and they go oh that's that makes sense to me but i find that it's most difficult for them to feel that um in a way because you can feel the turn and still be clamping down exactly yeah so how do you feel that turn while maintaining neutrality through through the neck and jaw and tongue um and can I ask you a question about that? Yes, please. Yeah. So do you find that teaching, is that similar in all of men's voices or is that something that's very particular in tenor voices? Do you teach that the same way to baritones? Um, I teach it a little, I, I think I do. I try to teach tenors a little more natural vowel position, I think through that, through that turn and whatever we can do to keep this neutral. Mm -hmm. And and to get that sound up there, I'm I'm an advocate. You know, I've been I'm not old, but I've been teaching long enough now to go. If it works and it maintains the the things that we know that we want, right. use it. Right, Fine. right. Um, but I would say that baritones, I I teach a lot of like a lot of rounding mm -hmm. through the zygomatics for mm -hmm. for baritones. Um, I find that most often it works that way for for baritones. Um, again, not not always, but right, but um. Yeah, it's all voice types experience it and, and men's voices experience it more similarly. But I just feel like for, there's such a pronounced, because that tessitura is so high in a tenor voice, there's such a pronounced switch. Mm -hmm. If you, even even when you do it really well, you can hear that acoustic shift. Right. And so, so and, and tenors have to maintain that position uh, right. more frequently and right. for longer duration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so kind of active versus that passive vowel modification is yeah. what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Um, I, I think I interrupted you. I think you were going to say something else. Oh, about... oh, I don't remember. So okay. if, if it's important, it'll come back. <laughs> so any other challenges that you see most often in your in your voice type, or or is that kind of the main thing that you you work yeah, on? Yeah, the the big thing is that, and then also for for me, my constant battle till I till I hit the grave will be will be my low voice. And mm -hmm. a lot of my tenors with low voice, they get down there and they go, yes, mm -hmm. exactly. you know, we're making these sounds. Yeah. And I, and I, 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 I so understand that, you know, and mm -hmm. so that's my, and that's the area where my voice is the least capable mm -hmm. is, and it's gotten, it's gotten significantly better. I listen to recordings now and I go, Oh, I'd actually put that on a stage now rather than once upon a time. I remember we did a test in, we had like a, like a, part test in chamber choir in undergrad and it was an f or a d or something it was yeah. not really low yeah. and i remember having that such a vivid sense memory of going <sighs> down there just trying to make any sort of functional sound listening. Yeah. oh man listening to my undergrad recitals and thinking 
that voice is not lined up at all, especially, you know, especially down there, you know, and, and oh, so, yeah. so uh, the, the low voice is something that is most, the, the extremes of the voice, I'd say mm -hmm. for, for tenors are the places where I, I've experienced myself and with my students, the most need for attention. Tenors are just extreme. That's, I mean, we, that's just how it is. You, you said it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. I'm going to take a break and ask another question from the audience here. Okay. Let's see here. So we have, oh, I like this one. This is from the Buff Coloratura, Amy, oh, who yes. I will be interviewing next week. She is my Coloratura guest. She asks, um, what is the earliest childhood memory that you have as uh, of a performance? Um, I was saying Little Drummer Boy in first or second grade. I think I was about seven. So it was on that cusp. I don't remember. So I, it was probably second grade, second grade. And I was in a church, I think probably 1100 people or so in, in the congregation, seven years old, up the baptismal for this church was up like at the front and up, you had like stairs that went uh -huh. up to it oh, from yeah. behind. Yeah. So, so I was up there in the drained baptismal uh -huh. behind a scrim in like, a robe with a little drum around at seven uh -huh. years old, singing Little Drummer Boy for singing this big that. Christmas service. That is so funny. Actually, speaking of Amy, I, she was watching. I think she had to go teach a, vo a voice lesson, but I'll embarrass her. We know each other way back when. We went to the same church way back when in Tennessee, and I remember oh, that was one funny. of my earliest memories of her, too. She was dressed as a little toy soldier in the baptismal, singing a song, and I remember just listening to her and being like, wow. I wish I could sing like that. And now, now here we both are in Colorado. <laughs> That's and now so we funny. I love yeah, that. Yeah, so that. funny. Um, good. Okay, so the last question that I'm going to ask are, what are some of your favorite vocal exercises specifically for tenors, specifically for sure. your voice type? Sure. So for for me, my I'll, I'll sort of go through my routine that I would do. Um, I start with semi-occluded vocal track exercises to get things, <laughs> SOVT, uh, straw, straw phonation, mm -hmm. NG, lip trill, raspberry, humming, you know, any any of those things. But I usually start with, um, well, before that, I start with laryngeal stretches. Mm -hmm. I stretch out my sternocleido and I do a little laryngeal rocking, do some tongue out, you know, some of those things to get things moving mm -hmm. around. And then I do my straw phonation for a few minutes. I do a lot of low tones mm -hmm. um, to to remind my body on that morning. Usually I get to school an hour before I teach so that I can sing before. It's so it's usually about 8 a.m. Yeah. that I'm getting yeah. to school and singing. And mm -hmm. so uh, at that point in the morning, you know, you like getting your voice moving. So so I do those those low tones on the straw and then I do some, some sirens and things with that. Um, and then I start in with NG. Mm -hmm. And then I do, the, the thing that's been so beneficial for me and been beneficial for my tenors is uh, doing doing semi-occluded and doing falsetto chest connection exercises, just making mm. them sing in falsetto and then dropping them down, like doing, I don't know, for instance, just like, great. and going back and forth and negotiating yes. those transitions yeah. there. Um, and then I love um, Nicola Vakai exercises the Vakai book I was introduced mm -hmm. to it in my master's and then mm -hmm. only did it those two years and then have brought it back the last two-ish months two and a half months and to get a pressurized voice depressurized the the semi-occluded the falsetto and those Vakai exercises make a wonderful trifecta you're making me yeah you're making me think I need to go back and look at those I don't think I've looked <laughs> at those since undergrad but well they're they been don't always by them yeah, and, and yeah. My, my master's teacher had this big old, he was a bass baritone, mm -hmm. and he had the most most fluid coloratura of any low voice mm -hmm. that I'd ever heard. Mm -hmm. And that was what he, he actually I did his doctorate that. at UNC. I know many, exactly many what, ago. yeah, yeah, I know exactly what exercise you're talking about. I loved that yeah. one as well. Yeah, yeah, that's so great. Yeah, so yeah. I, I find those. Um, and then we do, I do some sort of intentional, um, I use, are you familiar with the Feldenkrais method? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Maldi, so, so Mike he was Mike also Mike. a big, mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. He was also a big Feldenkrais practitioner. Mm -hmm. um, so we did a lot of that in our lessons. So I'll have my students, um, again, especially my tenors go back and forth between two opposing ways of doing something yes, for that, for that awareness. That. Yes. Um, that. And for my tenors, you know, have them sing wide open 
mm-hmm. on something and then let's like sing it on a falsetto ooh and then wide yep. open and then falsetto ooh, you know just going back and forth so they can feel the extremes so we can find for their voice where that middle point is right. that's the most efficient and most beautiful for them um Amen. yeah that's and great. then that's great and then making my um making my tenors and all voices i i mess with tempi a lot Mm-hmm. for stuff um let's sing it really really fast let's sing it really really slow let's do it staccato mm-hmm. on a vowel let's do it like mushy legato and exploring those those extremes of of not just sound but of but of uh the articulation and musical content right because that helps them figure out where they fit comfortably in the middle so to speak exactly and also you know when i'm working with my students on things like that I tell them if you're ever performing with an orchestra for an audition, you just never know what tempo, you know, you, hopefully mm-hmm. you'll, you'll be somewhere within the, within yeah. the ballpark of where you practice, but that's not <laughs> but always the case. You just never know. Yeah. 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 And then if you've done you it at all, ready. I was, I just did a Bach, um, um, Erwünscht des Freudenlicht. Mm-hmm. It's a uh, cantato. Oh, I'm going to get it wrong. 184. Maybe One that's right. Days, yeah. Anyways, but <laughs> we did it in August at the, at the college and, and I had been practicing it so much faster than the conductor wanted it. And I had to to come so far down. My color true was just fitting in everything. I was like, yes, my voice is moving. I can do it. And then I had to go, oh no. (laughs) It's almost worse when it's slower than when, than when you practice. Uh uh (laughs) You get your voice into such a nice groove and then you have to carve it out completely new. Yeah. So exactly. Especially with Bach. That's, that's brutal with all the, uh, you know, the breathing that he does not let you do. (laughs) Uh Yeah. You're, you're an oboe in those (laughs) situations, really. That's what you have to do. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, great. Okay, well, thank you. We, we're going to wrap it up here, but let me. I'm going to ask you one more question. Perfect. From the 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 um, group here. Let's see. So I had people send me some icebreaker questions before our interview today. I believe this one was from Christy, who's a doctoral student with me at UNC. Oh yes. She was asking what your favorite Christmas carol was. We'll end with this one today. Ooh, favorite Christmas carol. So. We were actually listening to sort of an old crooner Christmas album last night, um, my, my fiance and I, and um, I would say it's it's a three-way tie. Uh-huh. O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Oh, that melody is so haunting. Oh, it's so good. Um, uh, o Holy Night. Mm-hmm. And your tenor, I had, right? Uh-huh. Yes, exactly. Yeah, you got to <laughs> have those high notes. Um, and then actually I had forgotten, um, Do You Hear What I Hear? Okay. All right. That's that, the wild that they were, one. okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. and it, it's one of those, I think I remember playing it, we, we had an arrangement of like a carol medley in, in middle school or something, and I was, I played trumpet for many years, that was my first uh-huh. really serious musical pursuit, and I remember playing that, and I had, do you know what a flugelhorn is? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so I had a flugelhorn that I was playing these, these, uh, we played on a couple of pieces, and so I'm playing on this flugelhorn, I remember it just sounding so beautiful and that and those big open intervals Mm -hmm. just that the wonder and the awe that Mm -hmm. that sort of casts in that yeah was and i think that's why i love all three of those is because i'm i'm a i'm a three wing two or a three wing four on the enneagram all right and so the wing four is the romantic yeah and so the idealist romantic that all those i go oh there's something out there you know this 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 sort of this sort of of yeah Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly Yeah, so. that's great. Well, thank you so much, Cody, for talking to me. I am I am thrilled that I'm able to do this series with just so, some amazing voices and amazing teachers. Um, I also, I'll just do a plug for Cody. Something I really like that he does is he does this thing on Facebook, hashtag teacher transparency. And I love that you do that. He, he um, shows himself warming up and practicing. And I, I think that's wonderful for students to see and other singers to see. Um, a lot of times we'll just only show our process, or, or sorry, our finished product on uh-huh. our, our social media. And it's just so interesting and so encouraging to watch your process. So I've really enjoyed um, those. It's well, great. You're, you're, you've taken up that as well. And I love seeing, you know, I was so, so glad to get to know you last year and, and, and kudos to you on, on taking up those things as well. Your, your, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, killing perfectionism in classical music, yeah, and what is it? Uh, post your practice was that? Yeah, was that yeah. The other one? yeah. Practice, I love. I think yeah, things, yeah. I yeah. love those. So, so yeah. way to go for you too. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, we're all yeah. adapting here to this online virtual reality that we find ourselves in. So, yeah. 
Anyways, well, thank you so much. I'm looking forward to doing another one of these next week with Amy Maples, Coloratura. So if you're interested in. in that, join Tune us for in. that too. She's, she's spectacular. She's you won't want to miss it. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And I'll also post this. Hopefully, I'll figure out how to do that so that those of you that have not been able to join us will join us. And um, and thank you so much, Cody. I'll you're welcome. See thank you. you. Soon. I right. know. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye.